please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. It has been dubbed by the government as the world's largest public health insurance scheme. The National Health Protection Scheme was launched in the last union budget with the aim to cover 10 crore poor families. Each family will get a health insurance cover of 5 lakh rupees per year. The Niti Aayog was tasked with finalizing the modalities. After a meeting with state governments at the Governing Council over the weekend, the Niti Aayog has said that 20 states and union territories have signed up for the scheme. But some states like Punjab, West Bengal, Kerala, Odisha and Delhi have their reservations. In fact, the health minister for Issa has said that their state scheme is much better. Union Oil Minister Dharmendra Pradhan hit back, calling it an attempt to hijack the central scheme. Today, we're joined by Indu Bhushan, the CEO of the National Health Protection Scheme and the former Union Health Secretary K. Sujata Rao. Appreciate you joining us here on the program. Uh, Mr. Indu Bhushan, if I may start by asking you to give us an update first on how many states are actually mm -hmm. ready to sign the MOU with the center. There is a 60-40 ratio that the center had envisaged. Can you give me an update on the states that are ready to sign that MOU? Mm, actually, uh, 22 states and UTs have already signed uh, the MOU. And uh, we have about eight more states and UTs which are uh, ready to sign. So by the end of this uh, month, we should have uh, about 30 states uh, signed up. What about states like West Bengal, uh, Orissa, uh, Delhi, uh, Kerala? Because they had publicly expressed reservations. Punjab, uh, the non-BJP states, uh, have they come on board for this as well? Uh, yes, actually, many of them are coming on board. Uh, on 21st of this month, I'm going to uh, Andhra Pradesh. Uh, we are signing MOU there on 21st. And then uh, West Bengal also has uh, indicated that they've uh, approved the scheme in principle. And we are talking to their uh, health mm -hmm. uh, department. And we hope to sign MOU with uh, West Bengal very soon. And uh, Kerala, uh, we've had been uh, in discussion with Kerala. Karnataka, we are having a discussion tomorrow. So many of the non-BJP states are also mm -hmm. uh, on board. Uh, we are also still in discussion with Odisha, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, reach some uh, agreement with them. Uh, with Delhi, unfortunately, we've not been able to uh, have any feedback, and uh, uh, we hope to uh, have mm -hmm. that soon, too. Uh, you you said Punjab. that you hope that there will also, be a breakthrough in uh, your dialogue has, with... Uh, 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 some concerns. And, Okay, so uh, so West Bengal has the, concerns, Odisha has Punjab, concerns, yes. Kerala uh, has we, concerns, uh, uh, Punjab, Odisha. Uh, so uh, you know where where do the concerns really lie? What has, is the problem that these states are expressing? If you can give us some color on that. Uh, mostly, the issue is that they have their own schemes which cover more people. Uh, than what we are proposing. Uh, although the coverage is not as uh, large and uh, they don't have national portability and some other features that we have, uh, but they have their own scheme. So it's a question of convergence, how we can converge their schemes with the, uh, the National Health Protection Mission. And uh, so uh, there are no fundamental issues. Uh, it is basically how we can mm. converge both these schemes. And we are finding ways, actually. Uh, okay, I'm very so hopeful, an... like I, I mentioned, that we have had a breakthrough with the West Bengal. Uh, we have a very uh, constructive uh, discussion with Kerala and Karnataka uh, as well. And we had a good discussion with Punjab, and there are a couple of issues that we need to sort out. I think Punjab should also be on board soon, hopefully. Okay. Hmm. So what are you willing to put on the table to ensure that these states do in fact participate? Uh, and uh, how do you uh, plan to address the specific concerns that they've raised on the issue of coverage specifically? Uh, basically, uh, we are putting on table a national program uh, because uh, it's a program which is going to cover the entire population, the entire country. And unless all of them participate, we can't have a truly universal health coverage. Although 
still we're covering 40 percent. Mm. So we want all the states to be part of this uh, uh, ambitious scheme. And of course, we are providing resources. We are also providing expertise and advice. And uh, if uh, also mm. we are providing the integration through national portability. So anyone from any part of mm. the uh, country can avail of services anywhere in uh, the country. So that's also a unique feature of this mission. So we want all the states to be a uh, part of this uh, uh, national mission. Uh, before I get Ms. Sujata Rao into the conversation, let me ask you about some specific concerns uh, that have been raised, not just by states, but by the uh, providers of healthcare services, the hospitals themselves. Now, there are several reports that suggest that the Hospitals Association has, in fact, written uh, to the Niti Aayog, has written to the Ayushman Bharat uh, uh, scheme, uh, raising concerns about the pricing. Uh, they believe that the, the rates that have been arrived at are too low, that there are barely about 11 to 15 percent of the costs, and that they are asking the government uh, that the rates be reasonably and scientifically arrived at. Has there been any consultation now with the healthcare service providers on the issue of rates to ensure their participation? Uh, is that question to me or uh, Ms. Rao? Mm. Yes, no, to you, sir, to you. Oh, actually, uh, see, given the diversity in our uh, uh, country, uh, it's very difficult to arrive at one rate uh, which is applicable to all states mm. and within each state to all parts of the state. Uh, of course, the cost structures are very different in uh, different states and within states uh, mm. they're different between urban areas and rural areas. Therefore, we've done a very rigorous uh, uh, study of the existing rates because uh, we are starting uh, taking RSBY uh, and the existing schemes like CGHS mm. uh, as a base, and uh, uh, there was a work done over one one year where uh, these packages and the rates were uh, derived, and then Niti Aayog actually had done mm. the peer review, and they conducted several meetings in about 60 okay. uh, different places in the country, and they have uh, further revised it. So now these are the rates which are indicative at the national level, but the states have flexibility to change mm. them. Uh, they can increase the rates within a band. They can also decrease them. Mm. And also, if their existing rates are mm. uh, same, uh, uh, much larger, they can match these rates. Uh, uh, so we don't see that there is a lot of flexibility here. And as we see it, that on these rates, okay. uh, already there are several hospitals which have come forward and they uh, want to be impaneled. So we, uh, and of course, uh, okay. we're also in a learning phase. Uh, this is a scheme which uh, is very right. big, covers how, uh, 50 How many people, hospitals? And we'll be learning from the experience. How many hospitals have been impaneled, sir? It. Sure. Uh, how many hospitals have been impaneled? And I go back so again to the letter uh, uh, the that reportedly process. has been written by the Association of Healthcare Providers, and they say that there was no basis for the rates that have been fixed by the government. You're mm -hmm. saying that there is enough flexibility for rates to be moved within a band upwards or downwards, depending on each state. But the Association of Healthcare Providers say that only very low-cost hospitals will, mm -hmm. will find favor with the scheme, and at least specialized hospitals will not be able to provide these services at these rates? Uh, first, uh, there has been a very strong basis for uh, setting those rates. And of course, uh, in uh, our country, there has not been any uh, rigorous costing study, but we have taken the previous rates under mm. previous schemes as the base, and we've worked on those. Uh, in addition to that, uh, as you mentioned, we have provided flexibility to states to change those rates. So we hope that with that, I think some of the concerns of the uh, health uh, professionals and healthcare providers uh, will be met. And also we'll be undertaking okay. more rigorous cost study in the coming year. And hopefully uh, we will uh, mm. uh, change them and uh, learn from our experience in the first year and uh, improve on these rates.
Okay, let me bring in uh, Sujata Rao, the former Union Health Secretary. Ms. Rao, uh, you know, what we've just heard from the CEO of Ayushman Bharat scheme is that 22 states have signed an MOU with the government. They're hopeful of being able to address the reservations that states like Kerala, Orissa, West Bengal, Punjab, etc. have raised and get them on board also. And also giving an assurance uh, that even when it comes to rates, the apprehensions that are being expressed by healthcare providers will be uh, addressed as and when the scheme rolls itself out. Uh, in balance, do you believe that we are now set for this scheme to see the light of the day? Um, Shirin, that's a pretty tough question you're asking me, uh, given the time limitation. But let me quickly go through those two points. Yes, uh, there are some more states. In fact, Andhra, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, you've forgotten. Kerala, Karnataka, they all have to sign. I think they're in the process. I wouldn't be surprised. And I don't see why they should not sign up the MOU because uh, the uh, government of India has given them a lot of flexibility to stick to their own rates and not really change too much of what is going on and uh, also some amount of you yeah. know, the freedom to do the way they were doing. So I, I don't see, I think you know, it's just a question of coverage. Uh, the SECC that, they, that uh, is the basic uh, uh, po population line to be covered by methodology that government of India has been taken is not really fitting in with the states who cover more so they are wondering about the financial implications and so on and from the state's point of view getting 60 percent of that money means it frees up some more money for doing other things mm. so so it's a it's a it's a, it's a mm. good scheme and the government of india also can piggyback on the ongoing programs and uh, show a much better progress very quickly the important thing is about the rates uh, the ones i mean i couldn't mm. hear very clearly because of the audio what uh, Indu has uh, mentioned, but I, I'm not so sure whether really these rates will stand uh, good scrutiny. I went through them, I find them a little mm. low. Uh, it's admitted that they are 30% lower than CGHS. Now, if you take Karnataka, for example, they did an internal exercise, the health insurance, the government sponsored health insurance program there, and they found they were paying 30% lesser. Uh, under their programs to the mm. uh, private providers. So, you know, they are themselves on par or a little more than CGHS, and they are finding they are 30% lesser mm. than the what they So, you know, what happens really is that unless there, and secondly, you can't have one uniform rate. The input prices of a district yeah. hospital, a community health center, and a tertiary hospital are varied. Uh, the same appendectomy done in a mm. secondary hospital will cost much lesser than if it was done in Apollo in Hyderabad. So there has to be these variances right. that have to be brought in. And uh, so a lot of, lot more of work has to be done on these rates. And I'm absolutely sure they'll mm. have to go through a revision. And as for the healthcare providers, mm. you know, the flexibility that they've given is if you're NABH accredited, you get 10% more. If you are, you know, something, so they've given certain flexibilities up to 30%. But according to them, they feel right. that the rates are so, the base is so low that even if you gave that flexibility of 30 to 40%, it still won't match up to the cost. Mm. Now, the problem, that just two more points, mm. Shireen, and I will then close down. One is that the poorer the states and the more backward the states, the more yeah. difficult and more expensive it is for them to be able to, the volume and the mm. scale advantages are only in the south and in the metro cities. Uh, yeah. So, you know, if you go to some Jammu or some uh, uh, two-tire in UP or something, no human resources are willing to go there. So that is the problem that, mm. uh, that is going to be faced and they cost much more. So the cost of delivery of the same service in the tier two and tier three cities, yeah. particularly in the northern states, is going to be much more. And, uh, and so th this is going to be yeah. one big problem of the rates again. So the portability has been taken, I believe, as one way of coming across, you know, crossing the bridge right now in the short term, which will mean that a lot of patients mm. in the north are likely to be, and I know for a fact that a lot of insurance companies uh, setting up diagnostic centers in the north are promising AC2 tire uh, and a companion thing to come to the south and get their uh, surgeries done and so on. So, uh, now this kind of arrangements yeah. are okay, but then there is a whole post hospitalization care that's required. What's going to be the hap happening to the quality? What's going to happen to the indirect expenditures? So, these are issues that they need to think through. And the southern hospital, it's not as if they're, okay. uh, you know, unending uh, flexible, that they can take in the different varieties of patients. 
So I think uh, there's yeah. a lot more thinking, yeah. a lot more, but it's the first step and I'm not surprised. I'm sure they'll sort out all these issues in days to come. Yeah, uh, uh, valid points being made there by Sujata Rao. Uh, Shireen, Mr. Bhushan, let me get you to, to respond Sujata to mentioned. those. And go ahead, sir. Sorry. Yeah, Shireen, uh, Shireen what uh, Sujata mentions uh, is correct, that uh, we can't have one rate for the whole country. And that's why we have this flexibility across states. So one thing that we have told states is that if their current rates are much higher, uh, they can actually keep them. And uh, so all the southern states, uh, if their rates are, say, 20 30 percent higher than what we have proposed, uh, they can keep them. Uh, now, mm. in these rates, uh, what mm. we've done is we've tried to incentivize quality and equity. So if uh, they are certified by okay. NABH, they can actually increase uh, their rates uh, by 15 percent. And if they are teaching hospitals, uh, they can have further 10 percent. So. Uh, the rates can go up to about 25 uh, percent. Mm. If uh, these hospitals are located okay. in poor areas, what we call aspirational districts, uh, we give them 10 percent more. So we are providing incentive for these hospitals to uh, go to uh, poor uh, districts. So that will actually ensure that we have uh, different rates in different parts mm. of the country, but also we incentivize quality okay. and uh, uh, opening of new hospitals in poor areas. Yeah. Okay, uh, so you said that you are building in the flexibility that is required on account of the apprehension that uh, Sujata Rao raised and hospitals have raised as well. How many insurance companies are on board? How many hospitals mm. are now on board, Mr. Bhushan? Actually, one problem that we see is that there is no one uh, representative body for hospitals. Uh, we have FIKI, CII, mm. and others. Uh, which represent hospitals, but uh, they don't cater to, say, tier two, tier three uh, level hospitals. Because every day I meet some group of hospitals uh, which come from uh, outside Delhi, and they seem to be okay with these rates. And actually, many of these hospitals, mm. uh, and especially uh, uh, many medical colleges, private medical colleges, uh, they actually provide the services free, and they are looking forward to joining this uh, scheme because. They, they will be able to get compensated. And actually, we've done the analysis. Uh, so, of course, uh, mm. uh, we, I can't say that uh, the, our uh, rates will cover average cost uh, of all the hospitals, but uh, I'm quite mm. confident that the rates that we have cover the marginal cost of uh, uh, hospitals. Uh, and uh, one thing that you need to be also uh, note is that we are providing huge volume. Uh, this is for 50 crore people, mm. and so uh, once this kind yeah. of volume and the, uh, this kind of business is provided, I think the rates uh, should come down. And, mm. uh, and uh, as, as you can understand, that we have been established, this uh, National Health Agency has been established to be a purchaser of services, and we have to uh, establish these rates. And so we are in the process of establishing these rates, mm. and we have to start with a point where we can defend those rates and also uh, as, as you will appreciate that these rates that we establish right now will become the water point and uh, in future uh, when we have to change these rates of course it will be very difficult for us to decrease mm. rates at that time so we are also being yeah. conservative mm. in the sense that we are looking at the sustainability of this scheme so that we uh, keep the rates uh, mm. manageable and not, do not increase the health care cost but also keep into account that maybe uh, because of the large volume the rates will come down. Okay, uh, you're saying, you're admitting that this is at marginal cost, but you're also hoping that volumes will in fact make up for it. Before I go back to Sujata Rao, uh, you know, I want to quote to you what the uh, Director General of the uh, Association of Hospital mm -hmm. Providers is saying. Now, it comes back again to the issue of rates. And, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Gidhar mm -hmm. in his letter says that participation of healthcare providers would be sparse and Ayushman Bharat will remain grossly ineffective on the ground if the government were not to review the issue of rates. So how do you respond to that then, Mr. Bhushan? Because if, if you're going to have trouble decreasing the mm -hmm. rates, you will also have trouble increasing well, the rates uh, once the scheme uh, rolls out. Well, you know, uh, I respect uh, Dr. Gyani a lot, but uh, in this uh, case, I... Uh, respectfully differ. 
And uh, I believe that uh, with these rates, thousands of hospitals uh, will be willing to work with us. And uh, these rates uh, are not low. Uh, they cover the marginal cost. Uh, they will encourage uh, quality providers uh, uh, in tier two, tier three cities, but also in tier one cities and uh, cities like uh, uh, Delhi and Mumbai. Okay. Okay, so Jatha Rao, you wanted to make a point and also respond to what we just had there from Mr. Bhushan. Ah. And this is the argument that the government has been making yeah. that the volumes will offset, uh, will offset the issue of, uh, of cost. You know, Shireen, uh, if you were, uh, you know, in the South, I think already a saturated market, if I may put it that way, uh, in the sense that, you know, uh, the hospitals that are already catering to the existing uh, government-sponsored health insurance schemes, uh, you know, you have to understand one point, that every government-sponsored insurance scheme, that, in the market <coughs> mix that they have, we are not a single-payer country. So in the market mix, they can afford to have 20% of the patients under this government-sponsored marginal cost recovery uh, program. And they'll have to have rich patients and they have to have foreign patients to make do their, uh, their uh, profitability or their average cost or whatever, you know. So the point is the flexibility to take on more patients is a concern which needs to be looked at. One, that is one thing. So if there's more volume, yes, certainly some pricing may come down. But what is of concern to me is today in tertiary care, unless government invests heavily, uh, the tertiary market 80% is in these corporate uh, or these uh, high-end high uh, hospitals. So if you exclude them, and for them they're likely to find the, the rates uh, way too low, and if you don't have a practical and a feasible discussion around them, you may be ending up with only providing like a upda upgraded RSVY providing some kind of uh, secondary care. These thousands of hospitals that Indu is okay. mentioning, who are these thousands? What is the capacity? Mm. They'll be able, these thousands are providing you secondary mm. care. How many of them have, after all, we have a shortage mm. of surgeons. They have a shortage of oncologists. So where are these people for tertiary care going to be coming? And they're all being mm. bought up by anything by these big hospitals because there is a scarcity of human resources. So, you know, in every, in the health sector, you enter into one problem, you trigger uh, several other sub-problems, and the whole thing has to fit in. So, it's a very daunting task. I don't envy uh, sure. um, Hindu at all. <laughs> but I'm sure that with time, they'll tease out all these problems. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you have to make a beginning, and I think they've done well in starting somewhere. And let's see how it goes. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so, Mr. Bhushan, let me uh, then uh, uh, try and get some uh, wrap-up comments from you. Uh, you know, re realistically, uh, what are we looking at in terms of uh, rollout? Uh, what is the update in terms of the IT infrastructure? And finally, uh, Mr. Bhushan, what is the cost that we're talking about? Uh, well, we're working on the IT infrastructure, and uh, uh, that is indeed the backbone of the whole scheme. And uh, we have chosen Telangana's... Uh, uh, IT model for replication across the okay. uh, country and we are working on customizing it right now and so the first module of that um, um, uh, IT's infrastructure was for impanelment of hospitals and uh, that was soft launched uh, mm. uh, two days ago and we'll be uh, putting it out for impanelment uh, of hospitals in two weeks time and then we are going to work on other modules for ident identification of beneficiaries and claim management and that will be done in July and so yeah. hopefully uh, our IT backbone will be ready by end of July and uh, after that uh, okay. depending on the readiness of states so we should be uh, ready to roll uh, but the ex exact date will be decided by the Prime Minister. And the cost sir? Hello? Or the cost? Um, can you say that again? I didn't hear. Uh, yes. Yes. How much? And how much the, is this going to cost uh, the government? Because only ten thousand crores was provided for in the budget. Well. Oh, actually, no. Two thousand crores yes, was provided uh, the in the, in will the budget. The cost discovered through the bidding process. Oh. Uh, actually, two thousand crore uh, is not correct because if you look at the budget documents, much more, and. Uh, uh, you have to see 60% is from the state, uh, central government and 
40 percent is from the state government. So 40 I think from you the states, calculate yeah. all that. But all those uh, uh, figures are indicative, uh, yeah, indicative only, and the actual cost will come out after the uh, bidding process is over. And uh, so since uh, we are doing this uh, for the first time, and in many cases uh, the states don't have the experience, so we I'll not uh, hazard a guess, but uh, we are ready for whatever uh, comes out of uh, the uh, price discovery process. Mm -hmm. But surely there I mean, has to I be some number that you're working with, sir. I mean, the 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 budget is the budget is has got to factor this in. Uh, you know, the finance ministry is going to have to factor this in. Uh, uh, you you've already got. Uh, the finance ministry having to deal with higher crude prices and the possibility of higher MSP <laughs> outflow as well. So what is what is the broad calculation that you're working with? Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, Shireen, the budget actually has not been the problem with the health sector. Of course, budget uh, levels are low, but hmm. more than budget numbers, it's the uh, absorptive capacity and ability to use the budget. So, uh, so I'm not really concerned about the budget and if we need money uh, we'll uh, get that money it's a, a flagship program of the government and we don't foresee any problem with the finding resources i think first we need to put all the elements of the uh, scheme in place and then we worry about the budget Shireen, he's all right i'll give to Jatara, i'll say ma'am yes yeah no, I'm just saying he's not hazarding a guess, but I don't think it will be very much of a financial stress because already now we are in June. By the time okay. they finalize everything, it will go on up till November or December. And secondly, as you know, in the northern states, the premium is going to be very low. As you know very well, that the more the utilization, mm. higher the premium. So that's why Kera, 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 Telangana and Andhra started with something like 300 or 400, now they're 900 rupees. So the premium is going to increase with time. And so they're going to get very low rates in these northern states. And the southern states are already frozen, so there's mm. not going to be much of a change. So I think it's pretty easy for them to calculate how much. I, won't, uh, I would hazard a guess of 4,000 crores is the maximum they'll be able to spend this year. And that should be available. 4,000 crores maximum? Of, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, I would imagine I, that that, year, that would, that would be readily available. This year, yeah, this year. For no, but there's also 40% uh, scheme rolls out yeah, for this year. Yeah, yeah, there's also 40% coming from the states too. So, you know, it won't be more than that, and I'll be surprised if it, it crosses that. So, yeah, Mr. Bhushan, final, final say to you, would you, would you go with that number? You, you want, didn't Shireen, want I, to hazard I don't think a guess, Jatara so has put a number on the <laughs> table. He's being very cautious. Okay. He's okay. being very cautious. <laughs> Well, so uh, I'm well, a figure. Come uh, on, Indu, uh, again, be brave. Uh, again, you know, be brave, Indu. Uh, this is the uh, scheme. <laughs> uh, well, Sujata, no, no, I, I, I'm Indu, being don't honest. Be so you know, diplomatic. Uh, this is a scheme being yeah. done for the first time. And, <laughs> and well, <laughs> I'm not being diplomatic. I'm being honest uh, that we, we really don't know. We are in a really uh, unknown territory right now. Uh, but the, well, the one right, thing that uh, you mentioned, Sujata, uh, Sujata is the right, uh, that uh, half the year is gone, uh, and so yeah. it will be only for half the year. It will yeah. only be for half, half the year. The well, year. Uh, yeah. Indu Bhushan, the CEO yeah. of... Yeah. And and your your guess is 4,000 crores at the, at the most, Sujata Rao. Sujata Rao 4, and Indu Bhushan, plus, appreciate uh, yeah. you joining us here. So, plus what, yeah, 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 the, the, what the states contribute. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, means okay. 40% of uh, appreciate states you joining us here. Together. Maximum, not more than that's that. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Okay. Uh, thank that's you for joining guess. us thank to you. decode uh, yeah. uh, uh, so Modi care and the way that it's likely to work. Appreciate your time here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, that's a wrap on this CNBC TV 18 special. Don't go anywhere. A lot more continues.